Hello and welcome to this video in which we will talk about how to build creative slides. First thing, I will guide you through the content we will go through. So first we will discuss that creativity must be based on understanding the message of the slide. Then that the creativity does not mean chaos, but sometimes less is more. Then we will talk about how you can practice your creativity and why it's important. Topic number four will be how to follow client style, but keep our design modern and up to date. And then we will discuss how we can get inspired. So let's start with the topic number one. Creativity must be based on understanding the message of the slide. A beautiful design has only meaning if it supports the content. Therefore, we need to make sure that the following areas are designed with the content in mind. First area is general structure. Then it is our visual enhancement, which is the creative part and then closely connected icons. But we already have a video that goes through this topic, therefore you can watch video design according to the content. You can find the link in the description under this video. Now let's talk about topic number two. Creativity does not mean chaos and sometimes less is more. In this topic, we will go through more areas, but all of these areas contribute to balanced and not chaotic slides. So first we will talk about text and its readability. First is really key message that text is always the most important part of the slide. Therefore, we should make sure that even in creatively enhanced slide, content comes true. Therefore, the readability of text is really important. So always keep good text font size. Recommended font size is between 12 to 18 points, but you always need to respect the company guidelines regarding font sizes as a priority. Usually each guideline has specific rules, but in case there is not any, then go with our recommended font sizes. The font size should never suffer for a more creative slide unless admin says it is okay to do so. So now we will take a look at practical example regarding readability. On the left side, we have wrong example where you can see that this enhancement does not consider readability of the text and prioritizes visuals over content. The slide looks nice, but the font size is only nine points which is very small for a majority of our clients. In the correct example, we can see that we chose enhancements that still allows text to have good readability of the text 13 points, which is much better. But what if we are working with a heavy content? Well, in this case, we should not sacrifice visibility of text over cool design as well. If you see very heavy slide, ask your admin if we should offer split slide option or option with extended slide frame to be able to provide more visually enhanced solution while keeping readable font size. So now we will take a look at practical example for heavy content. First wrong example contains heavy content, yet uh, in this slide, some space was still wasted and by simple edits, we could gain bigger font size. If we look at the correct example, you can see that we adjusted the enhancement of the icons. We simplified them a bit and also we uh, made the visual enhancement on the right side more compact. And by these small edits, we could dedicate more space to text. So in the wrong example, we had font size nine and with few small edits, we were able to achieve font size 11 points. For slides where we cannot achieve proper readable font size, we can highly recommend to offer split slide option or option with extended slide frame. We recommend you to discuss this with your admin that will guide you to what is better to do in that specific case. But you can see that we offer the split slide option uh, and this uh, option has visibly bigger font sizes and also more creative structures. So in the table, we uh, achieved font size 12 points and in the rest of the enhancement that is now way more creative, but also has 14 points font size. Even though we are talking about enhanced slides and creative slides, simplicity is still very important. Many of our clients prefer simpler creative structures over over complex enhancements. You need to find a good balance in enhancement, but you need to remember that simplicity does not mean just brush up with some icons. On the other hand, you should find some creative structure, but do not over complicate it with too many other additional elements that do not have to be there. So here is example for simplicity. In the wrong example, we can just see overcomplicated structure. There are even two icons that are not connected to any text, which is really unnecessary. There are too many circles, too many dots that create a little bit of chaos, yet still the font size is even not that big, 14 points. In the correct example, we can see that the structure is way more balanced. 
There are only four icons, text is more visible and readable, and generally the slide is not overwhelming to look at. But here we also see the other side of the coin. So the slide in the wrong example is again the same uh, input as we looked at before in the overcomplicated structure, but this slide or this option is not a creative structure. This slide would be just brushed up with icons. And also the font size is way too big because it's bigger than title, 24 points, and the title is visibly a little bit smaller. Here you can see how the input looked. So it was just boxes that we basically only aligned, changed the fill of the boxes and edit for icons. But this does not make it a creative structure. Again, creative structure would be something as you can see in the correct example. And that takes us to the balance. So yes, you should not overcrowd slides with too many additional elements, such as icons, lines, and other enhancing shapes. Slides must be balanced, as we already said, and also clean. Remember that the additional elements like icons, enhancing structures, and pictures are there to help transmit the message of the slide, but they are not there just as a decoration. They must have meaning and they must support the message of the slide. We have as well examples for the balance. So on the wrong side, you can see that slide contains way too many elements. It is hard to find focus point and the text does not stand out at all. Uh, font size in this slide is also 12 points. And as we can see in the correct example, there we were able to achieve slightly bigger font size, 14 points, which is again important for the readability. And slide is enhanced, yet we have very clear structure that does not overshadow the text itself. We have one more example for the table structure. So you can see that in the wrong example, slide looks still very nice, yet the amount of the icons is unnecessary and forces us to lower the font size slightly. So instead of putting icons on both first row and first column, we can only put icons on the top row and this is sufficient enough to enhance the table while keeping great readability. For some table slides, it does not even make sense to add icons to each header, especially when there are many columns. So we can consider another more creative structure or just adding one icon for the whole slide. So it really depends on the table, but some tables are really content heavy and overwhelming already heavy table with too many icons is not a good way to go. That's why you should try to limit chaos. Enhanced elements should have limited amount of shapes, colors, and effects. Here we will take a look at example. So in here you can see that we have icon that is fitted into enhanced shape. Yet this shape is really overcomplicated with too many lines, too many colors, and even shade effects. And here we have how we could simply simplify this, uh, this shape and make it a little bit easier to look at. It always depends on how many elements we already have on the slide. If you have slide where there are only two icons, you might go for a little bit more enhanced shape where you set the icon. But if your slide has five to six icons, you want to keep it relatively simple. Next important area is that slides should still be relatively easy to edit by the client if needed. After we send slides to our client, they still might need to adjust some text or maybe move some shapes around. So create easy shapes to edit and move around. For example, don't make a structure out of lines and shapes. Just make the individual shapes. Here we have the example on the circle. So you could see that what looked like six separate shapes is actually just one circle with lines. But this structure would be very hard to edit for client. Therefore, it would be much more convenient if we create this circle out of six separate shapes. Now we are going to talk about topic number three. Creativity must be practiced. Every skill must be practiced to be perfected and creativity is not different. By practicing, you will learn which structures are suitable for different types of slides, how to structure slides in optimal way. Also, you will find out which structures fit different designing styles. For example, some structures might be more suitable for filled box styles than the clean styles and the other way around and you need to figure out how to work with these differences. And you will also learn how to apply structures you can download from our inspiration feature or other sources to different client styles and guidelines. So if you will practice all of these areas, the design will come to you much easier and faster. 
For example, you can just download some slide from our inspiration feature and try to convert it to the style of some other template, try to recolor it, try to fit it to the slide frame, and you will find all the cool tricks um, that will help you to do this during the tasks faster and efficient. Topic number four, follow client style, but keep your design modern and up to date. Try to avoid outdated looking structures. We actually have a video that is called what not to do on no more platform. And this video offers overview about the styles that we found a little bit outdated. Therefore, you can see a lot of examples inside this video. This video can be as well found in the description under the video. If presentation contains pictures, make sure they look professional, modern, and not like old school stock photos. And some clients follow clean style for their presentations. That means it's more non-filled boxes style and very airy look. Some designers struggle to adapt to this type of modern style. Therefore, try to study inspiration file and search for inspiration that can help you to nail this type of style. And lastly, let's talk about how you can get inspired. So first thing that can help you is client's inspiration file. This file showcases what types of slides client uses in their presentations. You can also reuse some of the slide structures, yet especially in enhancement tasks, slides should have a variety of enhanced structures and should offer to client also new structures and solutions for slides. So you should definitely not only copy three structures from inspiration file throughout 50 slides. We should offer to our clients innovative slides and solutions, and of course, they still have to be within their style and guidelines. Inspiration file will also help you to understand more how guidelines are applied and how you can adjust other structures to this client style. But please note, we try to keep clients' inspiration slides updated as much as possible, yet sometimes small guideline changes are made and they might not be yet reflected in the inspiration file. Therefore, always apply rules of the guidelines file as a priority. If you are unsure about some rules that contradict itself between guidelines and inspiration file, just discuss it with your admin and they will definitely help you. Another source of inspiration can be our SlideHub platform. This tool is only available for fully fledged designers on our platform. This means if you are still in application process, you will not get access to this platform, but once you fully pass and you are a regular designer on our platform, you will get invited to this platform. You just need to accept our invitation, uh, download the add-in right away to your PowerPoint, and then you will have this PowerPoint add-in available for you and you can use it for many productivity features. You can insert inspiration slides, just as you can see in here. You can also find their icons, flags, images, and illustrations. So this is a really awesome tool that we offer to our designers. Therefore, please try to use it when you need to work on creative slides. As you can see, once you click on insert inspiration slides, this window will open and we have their many categories such as different template layouts, bullet points, graph processes, timelines, funnels, and more. And you can even choose amount of bullet points you, you are working with. So if you know that client's slide has four bullets, you can just click the category or the tag of four bullets and it will give you all available slides in this specific uh, category or tag but it's important that you know how to choose and also how to convert slides from this inspiration feature to clients template and style so first of all you need to understand and read the client's content because these visuals that you will choose needs to support message of the slide as always the content is the most important thing once you know what the content is about, you will be able to choose the correct category that fits your slide. So it might be timeline, steps, process, funnel, whatever the slide is about. Once you chose your preferred slide, you insert this selected slide to client's template. You will still need to fit it to the slide frame and adjust the structure if needed. You will have to make sure that the structure is compliant with client's guidelines and style. So this means you really need to do all the adjustments. You need to recheck the text box margins, colors, fonts. You will need to make sure that the style is correct. Majority of our slides on this inspiration platform, they are in field style. So if your client uses, let's say, outline style or more airy style, you will need to adjust these slides. And of course, you will need to update the icons to client style based on the meaning of client's content. Uh, these slides contain just some lorem ipsum text. So 
you will need to take client content and insert it to this slide. You will need to make sure that you will properly recheck the content and based on the meaning of the content, you will of course select uh, icons that support the, the text. So now I will show you on practical example how I would choose some slide from inspiration feature from the slide up platform and how I would convert it to this specific template that I am in. So first I will click on insert inspiration slides and I do not have any input, but I will just pretend that my input has only two bullet points. Therefore I will click in here and here are my options. So I think this slide fits my needs. So I will simply choose insert and use active template and the slide will be inserted in here. Now I will make sure that the layout that will be used is the same as in my other slides. So you can see this is the same layout. In here, these two boxes are invisible, therefore I will make them white and I will fit this whole structure to slide frame. Therefore I grouped everything and I will make sure that this structure fits well at the top and left side of my slide frame. And as you can see now, it still overflow on the other side. What I will do now is press shift while I will adjust this structure. So now my structure is adjusted to the top and bottom. What shift does is that it does not allow you to disproportionately resize this structure. It will keep the same ratio. Therefore, my circles in here will not get uh, stretched or squeezed. After this adjustment, the structure almost fits the slide frame, but if we take a bit closer look on the right side, we are still a little bit outside of the slide frame. So now it is perfectly adjusted. The next step that I will need to do is recolor. So I ungrouped the structure and I will recolor first part. I will right away delete the icons because they need to be replaced by the icons that would fit my content. And I will continue in recoloring. I also need to recolor all the lines and as well this one. Since I do not have any input content, I don't know what kind of icons to choose, but if I would have, I would read the text. So I do have understanding what the text is about. And then I would go to insert icons and flex section. And as you can see in here, we have uh, many different styles available, but these two styles are the most common one. So I would just choose icon, icons according to meaning that fits my slide. And I would, of course, insert them to these two spaces. I would recolor them and make sure they are perfectly aligned within this structure. Furthermore, I should check if the text is really according to guidelines, if the text box margins are according to guidelines. So all of these details so should still be checked by you when you are using these structures because guidelines rules have to be applied in every case. But now you can see that in very fast way, I got really nice enhanced structure into my slide and uh, it was really fast and efficient. And there have been only a few things I needed to be careful about. One of the most common mistakes is usually regarding the resizing uh, the structures and fitting them to slide frame. You really need to make sure that you do not squeeze or stretch any elements such as circles or icons if there would be already some. So now you can see how this process is simple and can offer you really many great enhanced structures. So it could not be easier. <laughs> to learn more about SlideUp platform, I will also leave the link in description to articles that explain all about this PowerPoint add-in feature. Now we move forward. You can even get more inspired via inspirative platforms such as Pinterest. You can just go to Pinterest, it's all for free. Uh, you just need to sign up and then you can just search for anything like modern PowerPoint design and a lot of styles and inspiration will pop at you. And this way you can kind of see what are current trends, how to be creative in many different ways. And then you can kind of replicate these structures when you are working for us. If they are suitable for the client, of course, every structure usually can be adjusted to different style and different guidelines, but this can really broaden your horizons and you will learn what good modern PowerPoint design looks like. Another inspiration tool is very simple and straightforward and it can be Google. And again, you can just use it the same way as Pinterest. You can just search for modern PowerPoint design or any other keywords 
and you can go, for example, to images. There you will already see many different pictures that will pop at you. You can go directly to articles. Some even explain how to design some creative slides. You can actually Google a lot of things. Some people sometimes forget that actually Google is a great place to learn. So if you also have some small gap in your PowerPoint design, just try to Google if there is maybe somebody who can teach you how to do something better or how to design slides well. Of course, as well, use our materials. We have a lot of videos on our YouTube or on our web pages. Everything will be linked uh, in the description. So you have a lot of different sources you can discover and learn from. So I hope this video inspired you to practice your creative skills. Now you know which things to be careful about. You know where you can search for inspiration and what tools we offer so you can easily make some beautiful slides in a fast and efficient way. So thank you for listening and see you on the platform.